Why should I care about customer retention? Well, if you run a business, then it pays to know that when a customer pays for something and they don't get it, they get mad, they get hurt, angry, irritated, annoyed, confused, outraged, frustrated, and they get disappointed. God damn it. Let's explore why this happens and how you can prevent it. Before we continue, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience enthusiast. I've been doing it for 16 years now. 11th year as a Zenas consultant, and I'm here to share some of the things I've learned. Let's go. Today's video inspiration comes from Anita Toth from LinkedIn. Customer retention itself is part of the bigger picture. The bigger picture is customer experience. Customer experience is the working out of business. You don't work out because you want to fight a lion or a bear, or because you want to become Batman and beat the hell out of crime all over the world. You want to work out because you want to carry your groceries. You want to lift your kid up when they say, hey, daddy, pick me up. You work out because you want to go up three flights of stairs and not die. Well, similarly, you practice customer experience not because you want to beat competition with a club and not because you want to destroy your rivals. You want to practice customer experience or customer loyalty. You want to practice a customer centric culture, which encourages customer experience because you want to be able to grow your business up that flight of stairs right up to success. You practice good customer experience to encourage customers to come back. So in turn, you encourage recurring revenue, which is the lifeblood of a business. This is how you create a baseline on top of which you can add layers of growth. The layers of growth are marketing efforts to acquire new customers, selling efforts to acquire new customers, etc. Now, as long as we're talking about new customers, these new customers, whenever they buy, they have high expectations. Now, these expectations come from your sales, they come from your marketing, they come from promises that they want you to keep. These expectations come from marketing events, they come from social media posts, from reviews, they come from referrals, they come from talking to others, and they come from talking to your sales team. These are all promises that they were made and they want you to keep to them. It's important to understand that customer retention starts from when the customer pays. Customers want you to meet their expectations with reality and with acknowledgement of who they are, what their goals are, and what they need from you based on the promises you made. Now, the caveat is if these expectations are not met, then they slip into the buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse is that feeling of, oh shit, did I really go through with this? Now, once they slip into this valley of remorse, it's very difficult to fish them out of there. And rightfully so. You've let me down so quickly into the relationship. Oh my God, what can I expect from you in the future? Probably the same. Not a very good position to be in as a customer. I'm going to show you this graph on the screen that Anita shared. So you see how it goes from a curve of what the pain is of the customer and they get excited. Oh my God, they're going to fix it for me. And then you ignore them and you don't onboard them or you delay from them getting the package or whatever. And then it drops. And that's where you have them in the buyer's remorse of, oh shit, did I really do this with these guys? And it's very good to bring them up top and get them towards satisfaction. This requires you to go above and beyond and get these guys back. It's not a good position for you as a business to be in, and it's even a worse position for the customer to be in. These things are preventable if you listen to your customers, but especially if you have data and you measure it and you put that into a customer experience strategy, then you can anticipate these moments and you can just avoid having them or you soften the blow with some solutions like documenting the software you sell or the product you sell or the services you sell or having a person anticipate these and communicate with the customer to solve them or have a campaign that sets out onboarding tips or buying tips or how not to fuck up tips. Well, that's for you and that's not for the customer. <laughs> Either way, this is all preventable with a good strategy. It's not just, uh, I'm going to apply this customer experience band-aid on and it's going to work. No, it has to be something that is flowing within. <laughs> okay, so enough horsing around. I'm trying to make you guys care more about this topic because frankly, it's just viewed as one of those things that maybe I should also do. That's not cool. It's not really an ethical way of doing business. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like this content. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.